So today we're going to talk about my 2024 stacking plans. The first one is to stack a £10 per week in cash, which is about $12. And that's all going to add up to effectively a free, without sort of noticing the spend, quarter ounce of gold for me in uh, the later part of the year, depending on the gold price. If you want to join in, there's a video on that. But I have today to show you a few of my 1924 sovereigns. Also have some from 1923. So some of these are particularly low mintage and uh, lovely condition, nice coins nonetheless. So these are, like I say, some of my probably nicer George sovereigns. I've got the 1924M, I've got another 1924M, 1924P. And then we've got a couple of 1923s as well. So in terms of sovereigns, my plan for the year, I would like to obviously accumulate a bit more weight. That is obviously the goal. Uh, I, whoa, I'm pretty good at throwing sovereigns these days as well. Uh, so I am obviously trying to get the shield sovereign date run. I think I'm about seven dates away from all of those at the moment. Um, unfortunately, some of them are very pricey. You're not going to get them at sort of bullion prices. Um, they're going to cost you know thousands of pounds, like three or four times at least a normal sovereign. So not sure about those. We'll keep an eye on those three, but the other four they should be you know should be doable at a sort of reasonable premium. Uh, in terms of the gold series, I am collecting the Tudor beasts. So we have the one ounce golds here. I am collecting the quarter ounce. Not have them here to show you today. But uh, I've not actually picked up the unicorn yet, so I need one of those. But yeah, we have the lion. We have uh, the first coin, which is 2022. Also, that is QE2 on there. Then we have 2023, which was again Queenie again, I think. Yep. Then we had the bull, which was 2023 again. And that was the first KC3. And then, uh, yeah, the unicorn we just had a look at, which is 2024, and obviously king again. So the plan is to get the next, I suppose, two of those this year. Uh, normally they come out in the sort of spring and the autumn. So I'd be expecting to get uh, perhaps the fifth one in the coming months. And then obviously the sixth one later in the year. Uh, and also the Britannias, I'm not really doing a date run of those. Uh, I've got 2023 here. I have some others, but uh, not here to show you today and uh, yeah i pick these up when they're at a particularly good price if i can't see other coins available like uh you know if i was buying four sovereigns i would probably rather that than one britannia they're not exactly even but you know i'd probably rather buy sovereigns over britannias just just my coin of preference both good options if you're in the uk uh so in terms of sovereigns i would like to get the 2024 sovereign haven't seen that yet we've had obviously 2023 but not 2024 and uh, if you've been watching recently we'll talk about silver in a moment i picked up these two mounted coins so we have an 1820 which is george the third and uh, this is the first modern sovereign design so the first modern sovereign was 1817 uh, some people when they say modern sovereigns they mean like since the millennium this coppery color but uh, yeah there was a, a historically a, a sovereign coin from 1489, uh, which is uh, something to read upon if you're not uh, familiar. We have this, which is 1824, I think. Let me just find the date. Yeah, 1824. That was, I forgot about that. So yeah, we've got a 200-year-old coin, which probably has a dent in it now. We've got a 200-year-old coin there, and a uh, 100-year-old. Have I just picked up a 23? Have. We've got a 24 there, surely. There we go, so 1824, 1924, and soon we'll add 2024, uh, but it hasn't arrived yet. I believe it will be sometime in January. So looking to add the 2024 just bullion sovereign, not something I'm planning to stack a lot of unless the price is particularly good. I do prefer the older coins, so George and earlier, but the Gillick sovereigns are also quite nice. You know, look at that nice gold colour compared to these modern coppery ones. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I will be planning to pick up a 2024 uh, just normal bullion sovereign. And uh, that will be the plan there. And obviously just stack bullion weight when it comes up. Um, I've also got a little bit of Mexican gold here. 
So I picked this up just because it was a really good, oh, and a little lonely uh, tenth Krug. Uh, yeah, I pick up small sort of interesting bits of gold when it's at particularly good prices. If it's in like a bit of a, what's the word, a bit of a lot, you know, a bit of a, a bulk buy. So I can't really be bothered to buy, you know, a small coin on its own and pay the postage. So, for example, in the UK, it's like £7 to get insured postage on a coin um, that insures bullion. So if you're buying a tenth or, you know, a dossi medio pesos or something like that, you're paying like 100 160 70 pounds then you're paying like 5% in postage nearly. So just doesn't make a lot of sense, you know. It all adds up over time. Whereas if you're paying, you know, £1,000 and you're paying £7 in postage or £8 in postage, you know, it's not too bad. It's a, a lower percentage. So I don't mind buying, you know, bigger lots or just the smaller coins. I do like them, you know, it's nice to have them, but um, like they are a bit small, you know, if you're, you want to look at the designs, a bit small, even smaller than sovereigns. So I do pick up half sovereigns when they come around, just just small gold in general, you know, if it's the right price and there's perhaps a bit of a bulk deal, then I will pick up a little bit as it comes around. So uh, the good thing about that, you know, if, if you get to a point where the gold price goes higher or if you just want to sell something and, uh, you know, change some things, it's easy to move on and uh, basically you can pick up, you know, what you want, maybe trade it, different things. So ultimately, I do buy gold, uh, best value coins on the whole, but some of the things are a little bit more collectible. So as you're buying these at the time, you know, they're a percent or two more than a Britannia. They're not uh, sort of great premiums, but they do probably have a chance to appreciate more than a normal Britannia over time. So if you look at the Queen's Beast series, they've done pretty well. The Queen's Beast Completer in particular wasn't my favourite coin. You know, it's nice enough, but... Um, people seem to really like that coin and it seems to trade at, you know, decent premiums. So that is uh, something to consider. There is that possibility of a slight uplift in premiums on these. Um, I had a bit of a strategy on those, which you can see on the videos of those. But uh, yeah, when it comes to silver, as you can see, I do have a little bit uh, to show you. I, I do have a bit more, but I don't really talk about silver much on this channel because I don't, I don't you know, I don't really think it's uh, as good as gold as the saying goes, but I don't really think it's as good as gold in terms of uh, an investment. I think it's treated a bit more like an industrial metal. And uh, just when you look at the, you know, historic prices, there are opportunities to trade in and out of it, but like to post and, uh, you know, trade in the physical metal, it isn't the best or most economical way of trading the silver price. Uh, if you just want to, you know, stack some like physical metals, I would say gold is better, even if you are on a lower budget. Uh, the premiums on silver are a lot higher in the UK, and if you want to buy new silver, like if you're going to a dealer and buying Britannias, then you're paying for 20% of VAT on top of the price of the silver, on top of the dealer's premiums, and uh, you know it just makes it a very inefficient way of saving money. I think uh, there are ways you know you can buy silver closer to spot. You know if you can do that, then great. But um, yeah, just for me. The, the sort of bulkiness of silver makes it, you know, a little bit annoying to deal with in larger quantities. Like even just uh, stacking it for a short period of time, getting up over a thousand ounces, it takes up quite a lot of space. You know, it it's not really a uh, a long term stack either. So when you think about adding, uh, you know, ten twenty thousand pounds worth a year to a silver stack like that, it's just, you know, you're just asking for like back pain and uh, physio bills really. So. Bar the, the silver price, you know, doing anything crazy, uh, I don't really plan on adding a lot of silver, but I do, like I say, I do pick up the odd bit and piece here and there, and uh, we'll see where it goes. But, you know, I'm not recommending silver over gold, especially. I do definitely think gold is the better option. But, you know, we're not here to argue. It's, it's nearly Christmas and uh, nearly New Year. I'm not sure when you'll see the video. Maybe it'll be early in January 2024, so... Happy New Year, if so. But uh, like I said, we're not here to argue about uh, silver or gold today, just why you probably won't see a lot of silver appear on the channel. Uh, I do obviously have uh, a few nice little bits and pieces, just because I've got dinosaurs on, and uh, T-Rex are cool. Um, this is Liquid Metals, LNUK. I imagine you can find them online. Uh, there we go. So yeah, one ounce, one ounce. 
and yeah for stacking terrible but for a bit of fun you know just something uh, to have around uh, i don't mind so obviously with storing metals in uh, safety deposit boxes it makes sense to uh, just have a little bit of a uh, yeah a little bit of fun stuff to keep on the side so that's mainly why i have these two little pieces here but like i say the rest of it i don't get to see very often so that is uh yeah it's pretty cool that isn't it look at it t-rex skull anyway uh yeah that is the plan for 2024 so ultimately not planning to sell large amounts or buy you know more than i normally would it just depends on what the price does obviously if the gold price tanks down to like the 1200 pound mark 1500 dollars then i'll be buying quite heavily a bit more than i normally would if the price pushes up into the you know two and a half thousand dollar range or two thousand pound range then uh yeah it probably wouldn't be uh, a bad time to sell a little bit you know perhaps lose a bit of weight temporarily um we'll see you know i've got uh, obviously quite a lot of coins which gives me some options to sell stuff if i want to but uh yeah i just uh, there's certain coins i don't want to part with <laughs> you know uh, i kind of like my uh, sovereigns and yeah if i had to sell the sovereigns down uh or if the price was just that high that i felt it was you know peaking and uh sort of shooting up quite rapidly then i probably would sell more of the modern sovereigns from like the millennium to now um i'd probably sell those first and then i'd probably sell some of the other, other elizabeths uh maybe some of the duplicates in uh you know the victorias but i, I just uh just like to you know accumulate and carry on and the sort of reasons for selling gold for me would really be to you know push into another investment or move the money sort of in a temporary short term uh to other asset classes uh you know if there was a, a especially good deal so obviously gold and silver not the only investments in in my sort of eyes it's more of a long-term savings in gold um some of the cash savings in the bank you know into gold and that way you're not fully exposed to uh, the effects of inflation but anyway we'll talk about all that on other videos hope you enjoyed this one let me know what your plans are for 2024 we'll speak soon